Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from No Flight Images and in this short video I'm going to look at using a test image to look at prints, uh, monitors as well, um, but it's an image that has been specially designed to be difficult to print and it's also one that has aspects which will cause trouble for if you're not using a good quality monitor. Now this one here is a BenQ SW2700. So it's a wide gamma Adobe uh, 98 monitor uh, and it's capable of reproducing all the colors in this image quite readily. Um, there's still, you do need to set up monitors like this, but uh, the cheaper the monitor you get, the more work that calibration and profiling has to do. But this is about printing. And in particular, a uh, printed version of this test image. Now all these different panels in the image have different purposes for testing different aspects. Um, there is a freely downloadable version of this image. Uh, I've put the link in the text associated with the video. In fact it leads to a page that is full of printer test images and other specialized test images. Uh, so find something you like and try that. This is just an example, one that I've used for years when testing uh, printers. And each of these panels as I, has a specific use. So for example, the top panel here is for solid color and in particular has detail in the reds of the peppers in it. The shadow detail and detail in heart bright colors can be difficult for printers to produce and depends on the quality of the printer profile. Now I should say right up front that printer profiles are not there to make all pictures look the same. They are there to get good, reliable, repeatable results from a particular paper with a particular ink in a particular printer. Uh, they do vary. Prints vary. The most obvious one is, I, I very much doubt they'll have be very visible here on uh, the video, but this is on a matte art paper and this is on a luster paper. Uh, by the feel of it, it's a Baraita style paper. Um, I have gloss ones, I have all kinds of prints. I use this image a lot. And that's one advantage I would say of you picking a test image you like and using it regularly, is that you get a feel for how the image should look and you get a feel for spotting mistakes. So, um, for example, the second panel here uh, with this pottery on it, these are very saturated colors. And in fact, the colors which are uh, for basic monitors are difficult to reproduce some of these colors, but they're well within the gamut of uh, printing. However, there is a difference uh, when it comes to between matte and gloss, and it's quite possible, I can see clearly on, on this, that the colors here on this matte paper just are nowhere near as vibrant as they are on this sort of shiny surface, as I say, it's a Baraita paper, I believe, for, or, or a luster of some style. But that's a test for that. Now, uh, do check the, de the written details, which goes into the description of each of these panels, uh, what they're there for. So we have uh, the four over on this side are for various aspects of skin tones, uh, including handing, handling blown out highlights, shadow detail, dark colors. Uh, this one here is lit with a very yellow light. So um, the lady in this particular picture does look slightly yellow. She should not, however, look green. So you look for a slight shift there. Equally well here, the girl in this picture here, uh, you've got detail in the background for dark uh, colors to see how they uh, blend with black. You're looking for smoothness of transitions. You're not only looking for bright colors, you're looking at gradients. So we've got lots of different aspects of this. So here, for example, this uh, picture of the bright lights, you're looking for how colors appear on a black background. Um, that will show over inking, for example, um, just something like that. Uh, these bright colors of these textiles, that is fine color detail you're looking at. 
Um, so they're very bright colours, there's lots of very fine detail, that's a nasty test for your, uh, for your printer. Um, good printer with a good profile and a good paper should be able to manage this, but remember they will not look the same. Now the fact that two prints that have both been profiled, accurately profiled to give as good results as they can, look different and look different to the screen gives the lie to the illusion that somehow printing is about making the print match the screen. It isn't. The screen here, now I've set this screen, because uh, it's a hardware calibrated one, I've set the colour temperature very low on this particular screen, down to 4K, 4K so 4000K. It's a very low colour temperature, not a temperature I'd work at, but one that actually gives fairly good reproduction here on the video in the lighting I've got here. So I've got um, somewhat changeable lighting coming in for some windows over here. I've got LED halogen replacement lighting, so it's quite a mix of what we're seeing here. But this matches quite well and gives a fairly good view on the screen there. So anyway, they, do, they look different. There is no correct match from screen. What you're looking for in these test images is, are there any egregious faults in it? Are shadows blocked up? So, for example, um, in the black and white section down here, you're looking for evenness of tone. So in these skin tones, you're looking that there's no colour casts. There are lots of fine gradations, so smooth gradations of tone in this bottom image here of the scooter. Uh, you want to make sure there's no banding visible there. These are all kinds, of, likewise with dark shadow detail on the staircase. Uh, these are all aspects of things that can look wrong. Now, what happens if you find that your profiled print, when you print it out, that it doesn't look quite right? Well, first of all, it may be the wrong settings. It may be that your particular paper, printer, ink combination just doesn't work terribly well. Now this is why I always say to people, when you get a new printer, you get the printer first, then you get the paper. You see which papers match. Now I've recently tested a whole range of printers, and one in particular, the Epson 8550, has some pigment ink mixed in with its uh, dye-based ink. So there's a pigment black and uh, a dye black in it. And the mixture of these gives quite variable performance on different papers. It gives very good results with profiles, but it does mean that if you just choose papers first before picking uh, the, your printer, you don't know how they're gonna come out. So it's another reason for getting test packs Printing a known test image. Now, all the printers, and I've tested dozens and dozens of printers over the years, uh, right up to really quite large ones. This or version of it, an early version of it, is almost always the first image that I print in colour. Similarly, I've got a black and white test image that I use, but um, I've got something covering that as well in, a, in another video. But for colour, Almost always the first image I use is this one here, because it has things like, for that, if you're interested in landscape, we've got a really nice blue sky gradation. We've got sunset colors, or sunrise colors, I don't know, sunrise here. We've got smooth colors, and we've got greens. These greens are a tricky bit to reproduce. Um, so you've got all of this stuff here, you look at it, you compare it with your screen, but remember your screen may not be perfect itself. The idea is that a test image like this, I should be able to evaluate without even looking at the screen. I'm evaluating this as an image that works in of itself. I'm not comparing it with this, I'm not comparing this with this. Each instance where you use the test image, it is how that image is performing on that particular bit of paper that you're interested in. So I've got the ones here, this one here, on a matte paper. And uh, that one, I can, I can feel the surface of it. Yeah, and without looking on the back, I probably couldn't tell you which printer these were printed on or what the settings were. They're broadly similar, but there are differences between them. So I look at this and for uh, a matte, uh, this has got very good 
dark shadow reproduction. Uh, my suspicion for this one, looking at the colour, I can see perhaps a slight overall tint to the um, to the greys here. I suspect this one was done on the Epson 8550. Maybe I was right, maybe I wasn't. I don't know. Um, I'm actually looking only at each image for itself. So what I would say is when you're testing a new printer or testing papers, get a picture like this to use to test things. Don't use one of your own pictures because first of all, you don't know that it's correct. You don't know that you've edited it well or anything like that. It may well have done, um, but you don't know that for certain. You're also relying on the monitor you've used for editing it. Ignore that. Use an image that straight that has been produced specifically for this purpose here. Now, hopefully that helps uh, in the evaluation. But the key thing to remember is that profiling does not make prints look perfect or anything like that. It is not about matching screen and print. Get away from the idea of matching screen and print and your printing will improve dramatically. Now I've covered this in lots of other videos about printing and things like that, but uh, these test images really do make the difference. I know it's dull to print them, but uh, give it a go and see how it performs. And do check the details for the you know, of precise details. There are lots of details in them for all these different panels while they're checking. But anyway, hopefully that's been of help. Uh, please feel free to ask questions, drop me a line if you like at Northlight and uh, thank you very much.